Hi, this is 3D Fractals and Desmos Graphing Calculator, except I'm actually going to code it live. This is a voiceover, it's actually done later, but all the coding you see here is done live in real time. No sped up, no, nothing like that. So let's get right into it. So, I'm going to start off by making all the pixels, the grid of pixels that make up this fractal. And to do that, I'm going to be creating a list of polygons, and specifically I'm going to be using the 2D list comprehension that's built into Desmos in order to do this, using two indexing variables, i and j. And so as you can see, I'm building up a square, like the points of a square with side length 1.5. And then after that, I'm going to put the definitions for the i and j indexing variables, which are just going to be lists from 1 to 100. And it kind of it's kind of like a Cartesian product in that it does every possible like combination of each two values. I'll then disable the lines and change the fill to 100%, make them all completely opaque. And they are overlapping a bit, each of the polygons, so that you don't get the weird white border surrounding them. So that's why I did that. And now I'm defining the sequence from 0 to 9,999, and that's going to come up a lot. And then I'm defining 10,000 zeros, but I'll delete that one later, and you'll see why. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the x-directions, and more specifically the x-direction is not normalized. And basically, like, I'm trying to create all the direction rays for all the rays I'm eventually going to march outward. And now I'm doing that for the y-axis as well. So the first one uses modulo to get, like, it repeating, scanning across. And then now, for the y one, that increases every 100 pixels, since it's 100 by 100. And then here's the magnitude of all these direction vectors. And that's just the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. I'm just going to have all the z ones be 1. And then now I'm going to calculate the normalized direction vectors, the x-axis now. So that's just x directions not normalized, nn stands for not normalized in this case, divided by the magnitude. As you can see, I'm, I copied it over to do the same thing for y and z. And so there's my direction vectors to calculate which direction the rays will actually be marched in. And so now I've created a folder called data, and I'm defining all the positions of the rays, and I'm setting them equal to 0s, as you can see. And the reason why, or actually I'm setting them equal to z, but you'll soon see why I changed that, but... Yeah, I'm setting those to all zeros, essentially. So now I'm defining the colors. And I think I glossed over this, but I also created this thing called Iterations Taken. That describes how many iterations a given ray takes to reach the surface of the scene, and that'll come into play later, become very important. And so now I'm defining the sphere sine distance function. If you don't know how sine distance functions work, I can I have like a whole series on how to make 3D fractals in Desmos, so I'll just link that. And so that basically describes a mathematical function for shortest distance to a sphere. And I'm defining the scene currently as just a sphere centered at 0, 0, 1.5 with a radius of 1. And so that way I often use that as a test model in these kinds of 3D fractal things just to see if I got the ray marching thing working. As you can see I'm realizing now here that I can't have this variable called z because I'm using z as a function parameter. So I'm just going to replace everything with 0s. And again s is a list between 1 and 10,000 or 0 and 9,999 so 0s is just 10,000 zeros. And so I have that as the position, because I want all the rays to start at 0, 0, 0. And so now I'm, like, creating all the variables for, or no, sorry, the actions for casting the rays forward. Or I'm going to, right now I'm creating the assigned distance functions for every single individual ray. So now I'm creating the casting things. So this x cast action basically takes the x position, so that's equal to the x position plus the current sine distance function times the x direction. So in other words, I'm casting the x axis of the rays forward by the uh, amount of however much of the SDF is multiplied by the direction vectors component of the x-axis. Same thing with all the other axes. In other words, I'm casting the ray forward here. And now this one is very important over here. This basically sees like whether the basically sets the iterations taken variable. And what this is, this is a very important variable here. What that does is that determines like how many iterations it takes to reach the surface of the scene. So I'm seeing like, if the SDF at the ray's current position is greater than 1 100th, increment the iterations taken by 1 because you haven't gotten close enough to the scene yet, otherwise increment it by 0 because you've effectively reached the scene. And now I'm just creating a action that combines all these that I'm calling cast. And here's another one called reset, which basically just sets all the positions back to the normal thing that they were before, which is 0. And also sets the iterations taken back to 0 as well. And of course I'm using 0s here to get a list of 10,000 elements once again. These S is 10,000 elements, and multiplying by zero sets them all to zeros. And now what am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm setting the colors to what the colors actually should be, and now this should actually work. 
So I'm gonna try and load it in a few times, and we'll see if a sphere shows up, and look at that, it is. So the darker parts, that, like, is easier to reach, and that's why those parts are darker, because iterations taken is lower, and the color is based on iterations taken. Whereas parts that had never reached the sphere, where the SDF is now large, those ones were bright. But anyway, I reset it so you can't see that anymore. And so now I'm working on the fractal holes. So the way these fractals work is you basically subtract grids of cubes that exponentially increase in size. And so right now I'm changing the SDFs to a list comprehension right now. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if you don't do that, you get this annoying, like, list error. Like, it thinks that you're trying to make nested lists when you're not. Okay, so now I'm actually defining the fractal holes, and these fractal holes are basically, like, grids of spheres. Like, one of them is, like, that exponentially decrease in size. And to create these grids of, grids of spheres, I take all the coordinates and I take the modulo of them, like, each of the coordinates, as you can see that I'm doing right now. And that way, like, no matter what the coordinates are, it still thinks it's at the origin. So if you have a sphere of the origin, it'll still think you're near the sphere, like, regardless of where you are, and that creates a grid of cubes. And they're exponentially decreasing in size, as you can see, with all the 0 0.5 to the power of k things, and then I take the minimum of them to basically combine all those grids together. And then over here, I'm using the maximum of the sphere SDF, and then minus the fractal holes, and that basically says, okay, where is inside of the sphere, but outside of the fractal holes? But anyway, now I'm gonna actually do all the ray marching again, test it and see if it works, and there we go, there's a 3D fractal generating right in front of you. And that is 3D Desmos fractals live coded in 7 minutes. Hope you enjoyed. And, and just to be clear, I did actually practice quite a bit for this. This is like my fourth or fifth attempt at making this thing, so... I do have some of this stuff kind of memorized, so... Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.